Now let's look also at some uh, issues uh, related to the implementation of uh, interpolation methods. And one important uh, issue is point selection. Most of the interpolation methods are implemented as local and they are using local search. And we already talked about inverse distance, Geostatistics is also uh, implemented this way and you can also implement splines and radial basis functions in this way. However, this implementation has no continuity condition and you rely on the density of the points that, you, uh, that, uh, that the surface is continuous. And we already talked about the possibility to choose nearest endpoints or all points within certain distance. Then there are uh, various modifications to this condition. Uh, for example, uh, you can choose endpoints from each quadrant to ensure that there are some points uh, from each side of the, uh, of the point, or you can increase D, the distance, until you find at least endpoints to again uh, ensure good interpolation in those areas where you have some gaps in data. And then thin and natural neighbor doesn't use these conditions because they build essentially the structure, either Voronoi polygons or the triangulation to find the points from which to interpolate. So here is the, uh, here is the search based on distance. And the way how the continuity is ensured is that these search areas essentially overlap. Uh, what is important to realize is that each point is interpolated from different set of points and that means from a separate function. So each point has its own interpolation function based on different set of points although some of the points will be common and that ensures the smooth, smoothness in the resulting surface. And of course, with this approach, the relation between resolution and point distances is very important. You need to have this overlapping area. So your resolution needs to be set in such a way that is close to the density of the actual points. And this can be difficult when your points are clustered in different ways. So here is the condition when you are looking at the uh, at finding endpoints within certain distance and we can find them and we again have some overlap. So this should work fine. But then we can have, for example, uh, points distributed along profiles or distributed along contours. And here you can see that we start, have, uh, start having a problem. For example, if we are selecting only 12 closest points, for this point, all points will be on the same contour, so it will be the same value then the points for this point, this grid point, will be all coming from this contour and you will get jump between these two points. So this kind of selection that would create a bias towards the contour lines. And that's why it is also difficult to interpolate uh, from data points that are very dense along certain line or that are clustered in certain locations and then there are big gaps in the data. Another approach to, uh, uh, to localizing the interpolation is quad tree segmentation. And this quad tree segmentation is based on uh, creating segments from the data points that have approximately the same number of measured points. And with this, inter, uh, with this approach, we are creating segments that 
include not only many input points, but also many grid points. So we have a set of grid points that are interpolated with the same interpolation function, as opposed to the local search where only one point is interpolated with the same interpolation function. And then the interpolation is performed using the points in this segment, but we also need to use points in its neighborhood to ensure the smooth connection of these segments. So this is how it looks like. Here we have the given points and here are the segments. And because in this area, the points are denser, we have more points, that square is split into four squares, four additional segments, so that each of these segments has approximately same number of points, or so that the number of points in each segment doesn't, um, isn't higher than certain maximum value. And then the interpolated is performed using these points, plus the points in this neighborhood. And again, we search until we get enough points to ensure smooth interpolation. And you can see that in this case, we can really interpolate at much higher resolutions because we can select, uh, because we are using a single interpolation method for a larger area, not just for each of these points. This is how it will look like for contour data. So you can see that here where the contours are farther apart, we have larger segments. And where the contours are closer to each other, we have smaller segments. And we can still have problems because the data are just so dense along these lines. And we have these large areas that have no points. For example, this segment has almost no given points. So obviously the selection of points is quite important. And uh, one important issue is whether we have any identical points in our data set. Because if we have identical points, the distance between them will be zero. And then we have a problem with interpolation. So especially if we have different z, because then we can't use bivariate function. So we need to define what we consider identical points. And we define it usually by selecting some minimum distance. And then we can eliminate those points uh, that are close to each other. And we either compute average of those points or we just select the minimum or maximum or based on some other criteria. And the range map here is important because it allows us to decide when, what distance we can consider identical. So if for some distance also the Z elevations are very close to each other, we can eliminate such points. And one way how to thin the points, especially along the lines, is to use generalization. And you can see uh, on the example that I will be showing now that you can improve interpolation by reducing the data points significantly. So here, with these very dense points along these contour lines, we are having quite a bit of trouble to get good interpolation this is the example with high tension, but we also have visible segments here. So it is pretty difficult to interpolate when you have uh, uh, the data densely sampled along the line, and then you have big gaps uh, between these um, lines. So we can reduce the points on these isolines. For example, in this case, the data were reduced from 40,000 points to 3,000 points. And the geometry of the contours didn't change at all. So you can see that 
the 40,000 points was really not necessary and we were able to remove 90% 90 90 of points without losing any geometrical uh, detail. That significantly improves uh, segmentation and you can see that with these very dense points we have very small segments, then we have completely empty segments with no data points at all. So the, the interpolation takes a lot of time and the results are not the best. Now with, uh, with generalization, we really select only the important points, only those points that we need. We have much larger segments and we have data in each of these segments, even in this one. And then the result looks like this. It doesn't have any artifacts, but, and, uh, and it is also much faster. So the time is reduced from eight minutes to less than one minute. So there is a significant speed up and the result is better, doesn't have so many artifacts. So as you can see, the selection of points for interpolation is quite important. And sometimes you may be tempted to interpolate outside of the surveyed areas and then you can get a lot of different artifacts and even if the artifacts don't look so bad, the data are not there to support the result. So, uh, so it is really important to mask out those areas that have not been sampled. So you can see, for example, this is interpolation by inverse distance method and it will compute the results even in the area where you don't have any, any data, but you can see that the shape is just completely artificial. Here is the same area interpolated by splines. Again, you can see you will get some contours even in those areas that don't, don't have any points. But again, it's, artifi it's artificial and you can't rely on those results. So it is really important to, to mask the, the areas that were not properly sampled and it's actually useful to leave so, some points mm, uh, outside the area so that you get the edges of the interpolated area correct. Now finally we will finish with interpolation accuracy. The, we already talked about smoothing and the effect of smoothing is measured by deviations from the interpolated surface and that's essentially a difference between the interpolated and given value and then you can measure it as a root mean square deviations if you want just one number or you can compute it for each point and create a map of these deviations. Then Another type of uh, evaluating interpolation is predictive, uh, uh, predictive error. And this predictive uh, accuracy is, is measured by cross-validation error, when, uh, which is perform performed in such a way that we take out one of the given points, we run the interpolation, and then we uh, compare the value at the point that we have taken out and the interpolated value at this point. And you do this for each point and then you can find which points are really important, where you have the highest error if you take out that point. And also you can uh, compute the summary statistics. For example, what will be your root mean square cross-validation error or um, uh, absolute value of the mean uh, cross-validation error. And then we also use histograms, aspect maps, curvatures to look at the artifacts on biases or biases in the interpolation functions and we have already used those. So here is an example of deviation map. So if we apply spline with smoothing 0.1 you can see that the deviations from the given points are very small, are close to zero uh, for most of the area. If we apply smoothing 10, which is very high smoothing, 
then the deviations can be rather high, well over 10 centimeters. Here it's actually uh, more than one meter. And you can see that the, uh, that the deviations are the highest wherever we have a uh, rapid change in geometry, like this hole or this road would be smoothed out. So this is all about the interpolation and you will be uh, able to try out the uh, impact of parameters in your assignment.